You know what? This is a call from Beto O'Rourke, so maybe I should talk to him for a second. Hey there. Hey everyone, it's Jen O'Malley Dillon coming to you live from El Paso, Texas. A lot of shit going on um, and a lot to talk about. So let's get to it. Beto O'Rourke, 47 years old. Great birthday um, day uh, and uh, exciting to be bored. <laughs> And they threw him a surprise party. I had no idea about it. He had no idea about it. And uh, he showed up. Happy birthday! Steak fry was amazing. A really important time for uh, us as we go into the fall for more and more Iowa caucus goers to hear who Beto is. You also heard him really call to this country, to the people there, but to all of us that we can't be afraid. So that no one ever has to fear that again. We actually uh, got one of the best applause lines of the whole day. And again, this shows the support for things like mandatory buybacks of weapons of war. He's spending a lot of time with students and young people and on campuses. That's where we know young people have led the way and that's the path forward. Penn State, we had such an overflow crowd that we ended up moving it right outside. Thousands of people in uh, our Ohio trips and our Pennsylvania trips. So just growing, growing momentum. It's exactly what we're seeing everywhere. That's last week. Now we're here. I can talk about impeachment. It's pretty fucked up. This is a moment that's been a long time coming. Beto was one of the first uh, to call for impeachment. If you're asking would I vote to impeach this president, the answer is yes. Beto was on CNN last night talking about this. To advise him to do the right thing and to resign from this office. A few other big campaign areas of focus, end of quarter. It's a time that is so important to campaigns. Our grassroots donors, uh, heart and soul of this campaign, we say that every time. Our staff are in a, a friendly competition. We're challenging each other to raise uh, money. Rob Freelander rolling across in his silly ball chair. Mike Olin, our state director in New Hampshire, pretending he's tuning in from Hawaii. I actually don't even understand that. South Carolina is kicking ass. Our digital director in Iowa is basically beating everyone else on the entire national campaign for a number of donors. Give to the lengths of our team because they're working hard and if you get a buck, uh, they take a buck. Guidelines for the November debates came out this week. We have qualified uh, certainly on the donor side. We already have one qualifying poll. Ironically, we had four or five qualifying polls that came out the week before the deadline was set. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but we're gonna be fine. We need three more national polls uh, to qualify for us between now and uh, a week before the November debate. The last part of this is that we are going to take questions. Before I get to the questions, I have to ask you guys a question. I would call this the fish update. So I have two daughters uh, and a son. The transition for uh, kids as you go to a new home and a new state isn't always perfect. One of the deals we made was that they could get fish. The fish died several times, so we would sneakily get rid of the fish, sneak in a new fish. We got a big tank, we got four fish, saw the fish all swimming together, woke up in the morning and only blueberry survived. Did blueberry like kill the other fish? Was the water not good? Is it the type of fish? Anyone that knows about fish that wants to give some guidance, I need fish help. On to the questions. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? I'll do the arm. You should okay. do the arm. I'm ready, I'm ready. Why don't we have any media surrogates push back on TV? There are 20 plus candidates in the race and there are a lot of people that are paid to be uh, surrogates. And so it is not as easy to just say, here, Jen wants to be on TV to talk about the campaign or, or be able to push back. And in fact, a lot of the networks actually aren't interested in having surrogates for many of the campaigns. We work really hard to book surrogates with our congressional uh, members who have endorsed us. We also uh, make sure that we're moving around our information and our talking points about wh who the campaign is. We have a team of folks that are a rapid response team that are paying attention to all of the media. I know that it feels like you guys are the only ones sometimes pushing back and fighting back. And, and first of all, thank you so much for doing that. We're working hard at this. We're partnering with you. We're doing all we can to keep getting, you know, keep putting Beto out there more and more. You know what? This is a call from Beto O'Rourke, so maybe I should talk to him for a second. I'm actually um, giving a campaign update for our YouTube. I was really only calling to say happy birthday since I know you had a long day. You might make this the best update I've ever had, which, you know, is something. Thank you. Okay, talk to you, bye. Here comes the question. 
this says, will you say motherfucker? And so yes, that there is times and places for swearing. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite swear word? I would say motherfucker. Right. Not for every day. Only bring that out every now and again. All right, so thank you for tuning in. We wouldn't exist without your work. We wouldn't exist without your um, support. Give me some tips on these fish. These cannot keep dying on us. I mean, it's just too much. Don't forget, end of the quarter. So if you can give a little bit extra, betteroverwork.com or go find the Better Overwork staff. Uh, really appreciate you guys and I'll see you out there.